Hello everyone, welcome back to James Parker Sculpture. In this video, I'm going to be unboxing my largest ever bronze sculpture. I'm James, and if this is your first visit to my channel and you enjoy seeing beautiful things being made, then smash that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell and allow notifications so that you never miss another video. Normally when you tune in you can expect to see 100% of the sculpture being made by me. For this piece to bring it to life I relied on some help from some very special people. Let's go and get the box and begin unboxing it and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. No doubt most of you out there, wherever you are in the world, whatever you do for a living, are likely affected by this coronavirus pandemic. Here in Scotland, even working as an artistic sculptor, I'm no different. As many of you know, my one and only exhibition of the year, Chelsea Flower Show, is now cancelled. And of course I'd began preparation for this several months ago, before I knew that this might be on the cards. Way back before Christmas, some five months ago, I began work on a slate apple which was almost a metre in size. After a lot of thought and having cast several of my slate sculptures in bronze, but always on a small scale, I took the big decision to have this large slate apple cast in bronze. The thinking behind this was of course to have this bronze apple as my star piece at this year's Chelsea Flower Show. So this apple was ready some time ago, it's been boxed up and just sat up there in the rack, out of sight, and I thought really it is about time I got it out and at least show you guys on YouTube how it turned out. Hopefully you think it's been a success. Let's get it out of the box and see what you think. For years I tried to manage without a forklift and now I wonder how I ever did. Just taking a sculpture out of a box like this is so much easier. So I've just moved the apple into the corner of the workshop here so that we're getting some rare Scottish sunlight in through the windows up there. I think it has been a tremendous success and a huge thanks to everyone at Powder Hall Bronze Foundry who helped me with this project. It looks like we may have lost the slate original in an effort to make sure that this bronze takes on as much detail as possible. When the rubber was applied to it, it really does get right in about the slates. And of course that's absolutely necessary. So it's just one of those things. I know that the foundry are doing their best to get it back. The detail the bronze takes on from the slate is absolutely incredible. Now there's various ways to cast bronze and this is cast using hot bronze. So it's hot molten bronze that's poured into the mold to create this piece. Hot casting bronze is the most desirable form of bronze. And the way to tell a hot cast bronze as opposed to a cold cast bronze is to tap it and it should ring. So let's hope it does. If we tap it like this. A loud resounding ring confirms that this is hot cast bronze. Another way to tell a hot cast bronze as opposed to a cold cast bronze or a resin is to find an inconspicuous area somewhere and take a coin or something sharp and just scratch it. So somewhere in the base for example, perhaps not the best idea in the case of this piece, and scratch the bottom with something sharp like a coin and it should appear a bright copper colour. This is going to be an addition of six. So they are now available. As I said it was due to be my star piece 
at Chelsea Flower Show this year. Understandably, Chelsea's been cancelled and there's far more important things for everyone to be concerned about, I guess. Now, if you saw the last video, you'll know that I've been really busy working on a huge slate pear sculpture. It's going to be made of about 2,000 pieces of slate with a bronze stock. It's taking shape slowly but surely. I'm going to get back to work on that. Hopefully I'll have it finished by the end of next week. If you want to see how a hot cast bronze is made using the lost wax bronze casting technique, then check out the video I made a couple of months ago which looks at that process in detail. I'll put a link to that video in the description of this one. Now with all my apples and pears, the only thing left to do to this piece to complete it is to put it in front of the fire to ripen. But before I do that, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a huge thumbs up. Wherever you guys are in the world, I hope you're well. Take care and I'll see you again soon.